Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Timotheus, also known as Pharaoh Incubus, and I am the creator of the Black Artist. Today is a very special day. It is not because it's a, it's a beautiful day out of Chicago, but also because I am about to do a short review of this marvelous work of uh, poetry. Whenever you get a chance, please get your copy of Black Cripple Delivers Poetry and Lyrics by Lee Ward Moore, aka The Black Cripple. And, and I know some people may ask, who is Lee Ward Moore? Disability advocate in the Bay Area, out of California, and he's also one of the founders of Crip Hop. Basically what Crip Hop is, is hip hop, music, writing, and pretty much arts related to the disability community and the issues that we face in that community such as police brutality, how families treat us, how schools treat us, etc. And Crip Hop is a way to express those uh, feelings in art and music form. Wow, it's also an outlet to show off your art as well when mainstream may now I want you to show off your art, not because you can't do the art, but because you don't look like a normal person or a star, aka you have a disability in translation, basically. I had nothing bad to say about the book. It was that awesome. Is that fantastic? Like I said, please get a copy of that book. Please, please. I mean, how his his how his book um, is organized? He pretty much divided it into like four categories or four chapters, rather. The first one, the first chapter, the to the history of crip hop, so to speak. And what I mean by crip hop, not just the movement in itself, but also the, influ the influences behind the, um, the genre, the movement. Like the, the blind jazz people, the blind blues people, the Tom Wiggins, the Foxy Browns of the world, the uh, Teddy Pendergrass, the Curtis Mayfields. I mean, he laid out a whole history of how black people with disabilities influenced the music industry and the arts industry and even the civil rights movement. Then you get to chapter two, where more get, get into the issues that we face in the disability community, in particular police brutality. And this one hits home for me because Chicago is going through police brutality right now, considering Chicago is already one of the worst cities as far as policing. Yet alone, we are in deep water in Chicago right now because of how the police are handling the cases of two two young black men, both of them with a disability, by the way. Y'all know who y'all 
who I'm talking about, Laquan McDonald and Quintonio Legree. Though he didn't really get into uh, those two particular cases, in Chicago he did go into how basically this system via the police, the schools, and family structure is pretty much set up to fail people with disabilities, especially disabled people. <coughs> Disabled people of color. Number three, chapter number three. Now, in this particular chapter, he expresses love, which also not expressed in the disability community a lot because when they think of people with disabilities, it's all about pity on us. Not how we express love. And Leroy get into love towards family members, love towards mates, which you already know we all have needs. Even I have needs. You know what I mean. <laughs> but anyway, he also expresses his love towards certain artists as well. The last chapter get into the state of crip hop right now and the future. That's how I pretty much um that's what I pretty much got right now as far as uh, his last chapter. Pretty much the progression of where crip hop is going. So I consider that a a historical text, a historical flash, um, a historical textbook slash memoir in a um, guise of poetry. That's how deep it is. Most of the poems read like. Um, songs anyways and uh, rap lyrics. However, even with uh, how lyric his uh, poetry sound, how um, vibrant his poetry sound when you read it, it still has, you know, a little bit of of a nonfiction account as in like a memoir and even part historical text, which he gave a lot of history in that book. And it's only less than 200 pages. No, less than 150, I'm sorry. To read you all an example of his uh, poetry in the, uh, in the book. This one called Afterwards, Life is All So Beautiful. <clears throat> Far from grace, but to say, no camera, lights, or stage. One black, the other white. A singer, the other an actor. Different lifestyles, different backgrounds. Poverty and wealthy. Heard him in Hollywood, Hollywood, 90, 1991 and 1995. Spinal cord snapped on stage and on a horse. Out of the public's eye, two paths never, in, two paths never intertwine. Therapy behind closed doors, trying to get back to studio doors. Excuse me, trying to get back to studio floors with cameras and microphones. No more Superfly Superman looking through the rear window but not seeing each other. One saw in the cities, the other suburbs, connected and separated by spinal fluid. One saw for a cure. Another spoke about New World Order, singing, life is also beautiful.
cameras, boxers, and politicians follow him while Spike Lee get on the bus with him. Still some research, social justice lyrics. Life did change afterwards, but not a lot of, but not a lot still acting, still singing, both is able, but also dissimilar. Media for the one and let the other better way. But when it's all done, whatever politics you might like, my beautiful brother of mine, both gone from this earth. Never forget the life we live is oh so beautiful. In short, Leroy, your poetry is the shit. It is the bomb. I mean, like I was, like I was telling people earlier, between your like lyrics coming to life, especially if it's recited, and happy um, poetry comes out of songs and raps anyways. So that even brings each layer of poet poems to life more. And your strong sense of self and your strong sense of the history of hip hop and the disability community all those things combine into one awesome poetry book. Thank you for giving this to me. Oh yeah, and speaking of my poetry, if you're in the Chicagoland area, on Thursday, April the 7th at 5 p.m., Leo and Moore will be coming to town to recite his um some of stuff in his um latest book, Black Cripple Delivers Poetry and Lyrics. That would be a great treat treat for the people just to hear him talk about his book and even read some of his his um, poems in the book. So he has added bonus. I will be alongside him also, and both of us will have a conversation about one particular topic in the book, police brutality along the disability community. And in fact, I will even add my viewpoint to that topic in relation to Chicago. So you all will be in for an explosion of information and um, exciting poetry from, po from both of us, even though we will go provide the, uh, the fun stuff, the poetry. <laughs> but again, this event will be on Thursday, April the 7th at 5 p.m. It's going to be at just no, at Pop Up Just Art Okuja. And that's on 1255 South Halstead in Chicago. That's basically a block south of Roosevelt Road. We hope to see you there. But until then, enjoy your Sunday and enjoy the warm weather while you can.